Now, look, Keith, this news poll that was published this week and showed that most young Australians would back small nuclear reactors, which, of course, is different from the big power plant. It's a smaller model, takes less time to build, very efficient. Do you think this will finally make Labor actually sit up and pay attention to what people want? Oh, unfortunately, I, I don't think it'll change Labor's mm. position whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, the proposition that Labor is trying to put to the Australian people is that they support AUKUS, they support nuclear submarines, they support building uh, a nuclear submarine in the middle of the CBD in Adelaide, mind you, building a nuclear industry, having to deal with high-level waste from nuclear submarines, but they won't use it for power generation. Uh, now, I don't think Australians will wear that, Daisy. I think they understand mm. that if we're getting this, we should utilise it, and we should utilise it in the nation's interests. But unfortunately, Chris Bowen and the Labor left are uh, just rock solid against it. I just want them to see sense. Mm. I think we should have a discussion. Uh, it's a good opportunity for our country and we should take it. Yes, particularly since we, we have so much uranium, so much uranium. I mean, the resources are all here. Resources are here and we just don't use them. It's ridiculous. Now, look, stopping nuclear seems to be a hill that Chris Bowen is prepared to die on. It's a real ideological bent for him. He wrote um, in an opinion piece that nuclear was not a genuine alternative to renewables and the pro-renewables arguments collapse faster than a tree in, in a lightning strike. Now, look, aside from being ironic, uh, let's, let's be clear here. Um, nuclear is not actually an alternative to renewables. That's what gets mixed up. It would be used instead of coal and gas as a baseline form of power um, to support wind and solar. Do you think that he and Labor are, deliber are deliberately obfuscating this fact? Oh, there's no doubt. The mm. Labor Party never bases anything on facts. Mm. <laughs> They're just trying to base things on what they convince <laughs> the Australian people. But let's come back to submarines for a minute. You know, our current fleet is a combination diesel battery fleet. And the reason that we need nuclear submarines is because their endurance is so much longer. Uh, they run for 30 years on one set of fuel rods. Uh, the reactor, I'm advised, is around the size of a, of a wheelie bin. That's all to run that enormous boat and all the things they need, including combat systems and you know, crew comforts, etc. So why wouldn't you utilise it? I, I, I just find Bowen's position is untenable uh, and, in fact, Labor as a whole. So the other thing that really worries me, Daisy, with this is what is it saying to our August partners, mm. uh, the British, the Americans, that we're going to have a big fight over this uh, and yet somehow try and convince them that, yes, we're all for AUKUS uh, and the country will be able to manage uh, a nuclear sub submarine fleet and all of the things that go with it but not for our own power generation. I, I just you know, find that inconceivable. Mm, well, it's quite embarrassing, isn't it? You know, it doesn't really encourage uh, the rest of the world to take us seriously, uh, particularly when, you know, so many c countries in Europe have been using nuclear power for a while now and have found their, their power prices went down. You know, it, it's completely ridiculous. And I have to ask... The anti-nuclear bent really does seem ideological. I mean, we've heard these climate catastrophists for years saying, oh, it's a crisis and we're all going to die and we have to try absolutely everything and spend every type of money we can. But then we get we get to nuclear power and for some reason all of that goes out the window and, oh, it's too expensive and it's too complicated. Surely if the so-called climate crisis was actually a climate crisis, they'd be going all stops to try nuclear. Like, what is this inconsistency? And I think that's why the younger generation of Australians uh, are all for it. Mm. Uh, you know, they, they think the world's about to catch on fire and they'll <laughs> take any option they think might fix it. Mm. Uh, but this is known technology. Uh, it's much more advanced than it was in the 1950s and 60s. No one's talking about putting in place uh, old Russian reactors. Uh, there's a number that are being built around the world. Uh, in fact, there's four in the UAE and four in South Korea, uh, which are all online bar one, uh, and it's not far away. Uh, they're APR 1400s, mm. so they're a pressurised uh, nuclear reactor. Five and a half thousand megawatts in South Korea. Now, that that is that is bigger than any power station in this country in one place. Gosh. Uh, cost about $22 billion US, and it works. How about that? Mm. Uh, when we're picking the type of technology to generate electricity, that should be the first question we ask, Daisy. Does it work? When you need it, does it switch on and does it power your lights and your stove and all the other conveniences that we like? 